Okay, I've got a laptop, I've got a cup of coffee, of course, I've got a keyboard, mouse, pair of monitors, and I've got a dev board. Wait, do, do I need a dev board? I don't need this because I have this. Evolve. Verb form, to develop gradually. Example, online games tend to evolve over time. Okay, we need to level up. I will be teaching this design and this is my updated design. Eventually, I will transform this design into a solution you saw in the beginning of this episode. Why? Because I want to speed up prototype development. Okay, so right now, I'll explain how I programmed this microcontroller with this updated design. I used pin diagram of this microcontroller, which is derived from the MCU's datasheet, then there is a schematic of a programmer device, a microcontroller, of course, a diode, and a resistor for limiting the current which is flowing through the diode. Looking at the pin diagram of the microcontroller, those two pins are the power pins. Looking at the schematic of a programmer device, those two pins are the pins which could provide voltage. I connected VCC pin from the programmer device with the VDD pin from the microcontroller. I connected ground pin from the programmer device with VSS pin from the microcontroller. Okay, power pins done. Back to the pin diagram. Here are the pins which will help me program this microcontroller. Data and clock. Back to the schematic of this programmer device, those two pins are the data and clock pins. I connected those four pins as well. Okay, proc pins done. Handling master clear pin is required as well. Programmer device drives this pin. So I've connected this master clear pin on microcontroller side with the pin on the programmer device. The last thing I connected pin PB0 from the microcontroller with the resistor diode combo. This pin PB0 will drive light emitting diode on and off. Okay, everything is set up and connected. Let's power it up. I'm gonna go and open code grip suit, which is an interface for my programmer device. I'm gonna make sure my computer machine and my operating system is perfectly connected with my programmer device. Nice. Then I need to power up a mic controller. So I'm gonna go and select power and select voltage and finally enable it. The last thing I need to do, I'm gonna go and try to discover my mic controller. That's neat. My programming device code grip in this case is connected with the PIC 18F47K42. Okay, to sum up, I have successfully connected code grip programmer device and code grip can communicate with PIC 18F47K42 microcontroller. I'm gonna go and jump into Necto make sure my project is opened, check up once again that my setup is using proper programmer device and program this simple LED blinking code. And it blinks. Sometimes in the prototype development stage, not everything is going to go as you planned. I'm intentionally going to introduce a bug in this simple project by not allowing light emitting diode to blink. Okay, from one to zero. This would be our software bug. Make sure code grip is properly connected, then start the debug process. I'm going to step over to while loop and we can see our bug in action. So basically, no voltage level is applied to the light emitting diode. Let's stop the debug process resolve the issue we introduced from 0 to 1, nice, and start the debug once again. I'm gonna go and insert this register into expressions window so I can observe real-time value of a register within this microcontroller. I'm gonna go and place my cursor on the line in which I resolved the bug. Then I'm gonna select run to line feature and then step over. Nice, LED is turned on now, and my register value has changed. If I keep doing the step over thing, I'm able to see the change over and over again. Having programmer device, solderless breadboard and LED resistor combo as a separate solutions is generally good while doing prototypes, but having those four on one physical board, it looks even better to me. 
Looking at the manual of this dev board, I am supposedly able to program and to debug my microcontroller because it uses the same device, code grip. I'm going to check this theory by jumping in Necto once again. Then I'm gonna go and create a new setup for this project because I do not want to modify my current setup anymore. I want to create a new one. So by clicking on active setup, I'm going to select new, then compiler should be micro C advanced integration not the artificial intelligence, not yet. For pick, then next, board should be easy pick version 8, then MCU should be pick 18 F47K42, then click next. I'm not going to use any display right now, then I'm going to make sure my dev board is connected with my computer machine via USB-C cable, and I can observe easy pick version A board is successfully connected. I'm going to intentionally disconnect my dev board from my computer machine, then click back, then click next once again, and I can observe no selected board message, which is totally fine. I'm going to connect my dev board to my PC, then I'm going to click scan and look for the USB sign. Here it is, nice. Then click save. And finally, finish. Rename my setup to something meaningful and click choose. And finally, flash my code once again. Beautiful. Previous debugging we had was all about resolving hardware issue. LAT register was not populating as planned. By utilizing software debugging or a SIM button within Necto IDE, you can check logic of your program, but without using hardware at all. So unplug the dev board, in this case EasyPick version 8 board, create one variable, do something with it, start the SIM or simulator, and check logic of your program. This looks okay by me. So I basically simulated the logic of my program by using sim feature. Could I optimize development of my embedded prototype once more, just once more? Because this mini series is all about students. I think everything should be free of charge. To articulate this a little bit better, if I want to start developing in embedded world, Software should be free of charge, okay? Okay, <laughs> okay. Some hardware should be free of charge as well. Remember intro part of this episode? Yep, this is it. Program and debug embedded hardware from your home free of charge. Here are the steps to get you started. You click here to get to the planning debug feature. Then you pick one of the predefined hardware setups. In our case, we used PIC microcontroller for this episode and for the previous episode as well. Then click Go. Active setup had been automatically changed. That's neat. And you don't have to bother about configuring it. Okay, guys, this is live. It's just as if dev board is at your school desk. I will flash this code once again and the result will pop up. Okay, lovely. You can test it by yourself and give me an honest feedback. In the part one of this student series, I talked about speeding up a embedded product development process. Well, not quite my tempo. I will be speeding things up even more, so I hope I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, write down your idea, prepare for execution, and finally, execute. My name is Branko, and thanks for watching.